Hello. Let's continue looking at this common emitter amplifier circuit, and we're going to look now up, um, at AC amplification of the circuit, or how the circuit amplifies small AC signals. Um, and for AC amplification purposes, we're going to assume that uh, the coupling capacitors, CC1 and CC2, behave as short circuits. Now, in later videos, we're going to uh, find out how to select appropriate values for those capacitors so that they behave as short circuits for our signals of interest. Uh, but for now, we're just going to um, assume that they've been properly selected. So ideally, CC1, CC2 coupling capacitors um, behave as short circuits. For our AC signal. All right, and uh, we're going to look at, derive an expression for the voltage gain, input resistance and output resistance for this amplifier. Um, before we do that, uh, I want to kind of get a qualitative understanding for how the amplifier is working, which we've already done in a previous video, but let's uh, relook at it. So uh, we have an input signal and it's a small AC signal. Small means small enough that's not gonna alter our Q point for the circuit. Uh, for the transistor. And so let's imagine that the signal is, um, the input signal is going up slightly. So it's slightly increasing, then it may decrease and do other things. But just look at what happens when the signal um, increases a little bit. So we have a small input signal increase. Uh, v in, and V in is applied at the base, and so let me just write that increase at base. V in. So let me draw what's happening here a little bit. So we have our V in signal. Again, it goes through coupling capacitor CC one, and then. That capacitor is there so that the input AC signal does not interfere with the DC operating point of the circuit. And so the DC point at the base is still the base is still sitting at 1.7 volts DC. Uh, but now it has this small AC signal superimposed over that offset voltage. And so what we will see is the voltage here will be that the small wiggle centered out 1.7 volts. Now because there is a diode between base and emitter, it's just a p-in junction, uh, there is a 0.7 volt drop from base to emitter. And so the signal that appears at the emitter is going to be exactly the same signal, except now it's going to be offset by 1 volt, which is the DC uh, value of the emitter voltage. But same little wiggle, same small signal. Um, Let's go ahead and write this down so that we don't lose track of this. So a small input signal increase at base is going to cause an increase in emitter voltage of the same magnitude. So it causes increase equals to V in. Notice that I'm writing lowercase letters, lowest, lowercase subscripts. These are referring to small signals. And so you can think of this as deltas. I'm saying, you know, there is a delta in the um, base voltage, which causes a delta in emitter voltage, delta VBE or small case uh, VBE. Now, if the voltage uh, at the emitter increases by a delta amount, that means that the current through the um, emitter resistor, the emitter current increases because uh, by Ohm's law, if I have a larger, slightly larger voltage across that emitter resistance, then I'm going to have a slightly larger current through the emitter resistance, which is the emitter current. But the emitter current is equal to the collector current. And so this causes an increase in emitter and thus collector current. Um, and again, that delta, that small uh, IC or small IE is the delta, is the change in the collector current, is equal to the change or the increase in emitter voltage divided by 
the emitter resistor. Now, if my collector current goes up, that means that the voltage drop across my collector resistor um, will go up as well, because you have a larger current flowing through the collector resistor, a larger voltage drop across the resistor. Since VCC is constant, a larger voltage drop across the resistor implies that the, um, the voltage at the collector terminal of the transistor is going to be lower. Uh, and so there is a, a decrease in that um, collector voltage. That decrease um, is going to be equal to um, by a factor of IC times RC or the delta in IC times RC. And it's also going to be uh, negative. The negative sign implies that as IC increases, or a positive delta IC uh, generates a negative delta uh, VC. IC RC. Um, and we just saw that IC was equal to uh, delta VE over RE. So this is negative times RC. And VE can also be written as uh, V in is equal in magnitude to the delta V in. So I can rewrite this as negative RC over RE times V in. And so I have just come up with an expression of um, the delta in output voltage in terms of the delta in input voltage. And so what I basically have here is uh, linear amplification, right? I have a circuit where um, the, a change in input voltage produces a change in output voltage. Uh, in this case of um, inverted an inverted change, so an increase in input voltage causes a decrease in output voltage. That's what the negative sign represents. And then it's also scaled by a factor of RC divided by RE. And so my voltage gain, which is defined as the ratio of uh, delta V out over delta V in, my AC voltage gain, is equal to negative RC divided by RE. That's the expression for the gain of a common emitter amplifier. Important things to note uh, are, well, first, uh, the magnitude of that gain is equal to the ratio of the overall resistance connected to the collector divided by the overall resistance connected to the emit emitter terminals, as well as it is negative, meaning the output, the changing output voltage is inverted with respect to the changing input voltage, which means I have an inverting voltage amplifier. Uh, I can represent that in the figure. We were representing this wiggle that was now centered around one volt. My collector is centered around 10 volts, and so I expect that at my collector output, I'm going to get, it's going to be difficult to draw, but around 10 volts, um, a signal that is inverted and amplified, so something like that. And then as I filter that through my second coupling capacitor, what I'm going to get is a signal that is again centered at zero volts, um, and that is basically an amplified inverted version of the input signal. Um, one thing to notice is that we've, we've made a slight approximation uh, when we've calculated this gain, and that is we have ignored the dynamic resistance of the base to emitter resistor, uh, what we used to call little re. Little re will be connected here. I'm going to draw it right there. We've also ignored it into our analysis here. Right? Uh, but basically, the overall resistance connected to the emitter is not just capital re, but um, actually, the series combination of little re plus capital re. So we could write more accurately the expression for the gain. Negative rc divided by uh, little re plus capital re. Now, something to note is that uh, little re, if you remember, 
uh, was dependent on temperature. So literally, note that literally is equal to the thermal voltage divided by the quiescent collector current. And uh, it's a parameter that is dependent on temperature because the thermal voltage is dependent on temperature. In this case, we can calculate it as uh, 25 millivolts for the thermal voltage. That's um, the value of the thermal voltage at room temperature divided by 0.5 milliamps for the current or 50 ohms. Um, and so two things to note. Uh, one, little re is dependent on temperature. And typically, we choose capital R E to be much larger than little R E. Um, and that's, we say, so that it will swamp little R E. So typically, R E chosen to be much larger than little R E. We say R E swamps little R E. Um, and that's just for temperature stability for our circuit meaning it makes the series combination of the two approximately equal to big RE. Um, and so we eliminate the temperature or we minimize the temperature dependency. Okay, and that's it. Uh, this will be the more accurate expression for our gain. And uh, next, we're going to be talking about uh, the input and output resistance for the amplifier. Thank you.